So we've talked about area, which is in two dimensions, but we live in a three-dimensional world. So we're going to talk about surface area of three-dimensional shapes. And when you're talking about surface area, really, you're just finding the area of every single one of the faces that you can touch of an object, add it all together, and you've got the surface area. So we're starting with something very, very basic here, and you might have some formula in your head for finding the surface area of this object. I want you to forget that formula because I don't really want to think too hard about formulas here. Instead, I want to engage our brains and actually think about what this shape looks like. If I was to build this shape, I would need six surfaces. I would need this front surface here and the back surface, which are the same and it's three centimeters by four centimeters. I won't worry about putting the units. I would need this surface and then this other surface on the other side. And those surfaces are six centimeters long and three centimeters high. So I'll draw that one in as well, six centimeters and three centimeters. And finally, I would need the bottom surface and the top surface, which is uh, six centimeters long and four centimeters. And so I need two of those, I need two of those, and I need two of those. I've got six surfaces all together. So if we call this rectangle one and this rectangle two and this rectangle three, our formula for the surface area of this object would be two times rectangle one plus two times rectangle two plus two times rectangle three. So I've just put in all of the numbers here. I also added an S here for surface area, not just area. Uh, now the brackets aren't really that useful because I could have just written two times three times four, but I'm putting them in there so you can see that's the rectangle and then we're gonna multiply by two. Do the math. Now we get an answer of 108 here and it's centimeters. Now because it's three dimensional, people get excited and wanna put cubed here, but we're still finding area. It's the area of all of these, so it's still in centimeter squared or square centimeter. Now, as I said at the start of this, you might have already had an easier formula to do this, but I really wanted to show you doing it this way because we're gonna work with some really, really complicated shapes later on, and you really wanna break them up into their component parts if you wanna have any chance of being able to find the surface area of them. All right, and so now we have the shape like this. There's no neat little formula for this. You need to break it up into its component parts. We have a right angle triangle here and the same right angle triangle here. So we're going to have uh, three, four, and the five, and we're going to have two of those. We're going to have a rectangle on the bottom that's going to be four across and 11, four by 11. We're going to have a rectangle on that side there that's going to be three high and 11, three by 11, 11 by three. And finally, we're gonna have this sloping one here that's five by 11. So do another one over here. And so you can see it's relatively straightforward. It's just three rectangles and two triangles, but it really is writing it all down and getting an idea of what you're dealing with before you get started. So I've got my formula here, two times triangle one plus rectangle one plus rectangle two plus rectangle three. You're not gonna find that formula in any textbook anywhere. You're inventing that formula as you go based on the shape and based on what you're finding there. So put some numbers in there. Don't forget to use your triangle formula. It's not a rectangle. And then you'll get 144 units squared, whatever they are, centimeters, meters, millimeters. All right, uh, let's jump into some other shapes. So this time we're dealing with a square based pyramid. Now I don't have a formula for that. You shouldn't try to invent one. We just think about what's going on here. I have a square base, so that's easy, and it's five by five, obviously, and I have four triangles, four of these. And those four triangles are gonna have a base of five, and pay attention to where this eight is going from. It's going from the edge along the edge of the pyramid up to the top. So we're getting really lucky here because we're actually just being told the height. Now I say we're getting really, really lucky here because they could have told us the height from the top to here, in which case we would have had to use some Pythagoras to try to come up with this length here. They could have told us the length from here 
down this edge here. And again, we would have had to use Pythagoras to come up with some way to find this length here. But because we're being told the actual length of that triangle, we're in business. Just be careful with pyramids because sometimes they'll give you a, a measurement like the actual height or this length right here, and that'll trick you up. So of course, it's gonna be equal to area one plus four times area two. And that gives us 105 centimeters squared. Now, I'm gonna stop here for a second because the context of the question matters a lot. Now imagine if this was an actual pyramid, like the pyramids in Egypt, and someone asked you, okay, this is only a very small pyramid like the pyramids in Egypt, but I want you to paint the pyramid. If you were painting a pyramid that was sitting on the ground, and you were asked to find the surface area, you would only be finding the triangles. You wouldn't paint the base of a pyramid that was sat on the ground. Just like if you were painting the walls in your bedroom, you wouldn't paint the floor. So when it comes to surface area of objects, interpretation and context really, really matters here. And that's why I'm so, I'm being so repetitive about making sure that you draw your little pictures here to figure out what you do want to find the area of and what you don't want to find the area of. Now, of course, we come to the cylinder and you've probably got a formula for this. You've probably done this before, but again, I want to think about it in terms of individual shapes. We have a circle on the top and a circle on the bottom and each of those circles has a radius of eight centimeters. All right, circles, that's easy. We're gonna have two of those. What else are we gonna have? All right, it's a cylinder, circle, circle. All right, I've got one right here. There is my cylinder, right? It's got a circle on the top, a circle on the bottom, and that stuff around the outside folds out to become a rectangle. All right, it folds out to become a rectangle, it's gonna fold out to become a rectangle with a height of 15 centimeters and a length equal to the circumference of that circle. And of course, the circumference of a circle is two pi r, two pi, and r in this case is eight. All right, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a hand with that one with a formula, because we do have a neat little formula for the surface area of a cylinder. So the formula that you'll see written is two pi r h plus two pi r squared. And you can get lost in that formula. So I really wanna reiterate that it's two circles. The area of a circle is pi r squared, and that two is because there's two circles, top and bottom. So that is that. And this 2 pi r h is the rectangle we just found. A height h and a length 2 pi r, 2 pi r h. So this is the rectangle. A rectangle plus two circles, and that's our formula right there. Put some numbers in, get an answer. And so here's our answer for the surface area of this cylinder. Um, there's our number, centimetres squared. Now, this is where these pictures are so, so, so important. Uh, okay, this is for a closed cylinder, a cylinder that you can't get inside of, but so many cylinders are open. Think of like a cup or a mug. If you wanted to find the surface area of a cup, an open cup, you've got the circle on the bottom. You don't have a circle on the top anymore, but when you reach inside, you do have the circle that you can touch at the bottom, the other side of the bottom. And then you have an area around the outside, but you also have an area around the inside. So you would actually, in that case, have two rectangles, not one. You would still have two circles, but they'd be different circles. Um, there's all sorts of uh, permutations of finding surface areas for cylinders, but you need to understand what your formula is doing so that when you come across something that's a little bit different to just your standard cylinder, you can handle it. All right, so that's it for that one. We're gonna call that part one. There's a few more surface area, a few more shapes, a few more questions that I wanna run through, but let's save that for part two.